guys, how's it going? Today in this video, I wanna talk about ferns and how to take care of them as a house plant. They are such a classic, so many beautiful varieties, different textures, different looks, uh, but depending on the variety you choose and depending on your climate, they can tend to be a little bit more of a fussy house plant, especially if you live in a dry climate like I do. I mean, I've killed my fair share of ferns throughout the years, but every time I killed one, I learned a little bit more about the plant and how to take care of them. So based on that experience, I think I have um, gathered up some knowledge that I'd like to share with you guys to hopefully help you with your ferns. So I have broken this up into 10 different sections like we normally do with this type of video. So we will put those um, different topics up on the screen so you can skip forward if you want to. The first three things that I'm gonna talk about are incredibly important to get dialed in for your fern's health. And those are light, temperature, and humidity. If you have a healthy fern, a lot of times you won't be dealing with insect pests or some other things that I'll talk about later on. So let's talk about lighting first. So you might assume that since a lot of ferns come from heavily forested areas where it's more dark and moist, that that's what all ferns like. And while some of those type of ferns that live in those situations can handle it, most of the ferns that you find as houseplants, like offered as houseplants at your garden center or at the store where you're buying them, they actually prefer to have quite a bit of bright light. Now you don't wanna set them in any direct sunshine. That's really important because what will happen is their leaves can start to bleach out and look, they'll start looking like a lighter green color and then they can even turn a little bit yellow or they may even start to burn. So if you have a fern that's doing that and it happens to be in a spot where you know it's getting some sunshine, maybe think about moving it away from the window, just making sure that they're never in direct sun, but they're in a spot that's still receiving bright light. Second is temperature, and this one's pretty easy because they like temperatures like we like. We typically set our home somewhere between 65 and 75, and that's where these ferns will be happy. There are some ferns that are hardy to live outside, like in my zone five and probably even uh, colder zones than I live in, but that's kind of a different category. These are all ferns that like a little bit more mild climate and that do better as houseplants. Also, you do wanna be careful about drafts. They don't wanna be sitting in a spot that's constantly getting blasted with cold air, like near a door um, or an um, air register that's constantly turning on and off. They like it to just stay a little bit more stable. Number three is humidity. And to me, this is the most important thing to get right to keep your ferns happy. And it happens to be the one that I struggle with the most because I live in a super dry climate. There are a few things that you you can do to help. Um, so first of all, you can put your plants in either a kitchen or a bathroom where water is naturally flowing more, place them near the water source so that they can hopefully benefit from a little bit of extra moisture in the air. You could also use ferns and terrariums in like closed terrarium situations where naturally more humidity and moisture kind of like condenses in there. Um, ferns really thrive in that type of situation. You can also cluster all your plants together. So if you've got a ton of ferns, put them all in the same spot and they kind of create their own little microclimate. You can set up humidifiers near your plants, which might make sense if you've got all your plants kind of like in one general area, but it's not a really great solution for me because I don't wanna buy a humidifier for every single room in my house. It's not a like a financially feasible option. And I also don't wanna look at humidifiers all the time. They're not the prettiest things. And I just want my plants to shine and I don't want humidifiers to wreck that. Um, so there's a couple other things you can do as well. You can also put pebbles in a tray underneath your fern. Um, so just in the saucer you've got underneath your pot, put a little layer of pebbles and then a little bit of water. Set your pot back on top of it, just making sure that it's not sitting in water so that your plant's not wicking up extra moisture. But as the water in those pebbles starts to evaporate, it'll create a little bit of additional moisture in the air, which will help your fern. But all of those aside, I actually missed my plants. It's a little bit more labor intensive, but my plants do so much better. I skipped the humidifier, the pebbles in the tray. I use this right here. This is my mister. I keep it full all the time. So all I have to do is walk by my plants once or twice a day and mist them. Um, now it seems like once or twice a day would be a huge pain. It's really not when you've got everything set up. So I always make sure with these type of more labor intensive plants to put them in a spot where I just naturally am more. So I keep them in a kitchen or our living room. I actually have some seed starting stuff up in my bedroom, so I'll remember to water them. It's just how I am. So if I've got it set up to where it makes sense, I can really keep my plants happier. Now you don't have to mist twice a day. Um, you don't even have to mist once a day. I find if you at least mist like every other day in as dry a climate as we live in, um, the plants do well. There are some like the maidenhair fern right here, this sweet little delicate fern, and then also boss 
Boston type ferns right here, they tend to crave more moisture than other ferns to me, in my experience anyway. Um, and then our bird nest type ferns, I've got like four of them here. Starting here, I've got an Asplenium. This is just a classic bird nest right here. It's got a little bit bolder foliage. This one, which I'm gonna be repotting in a second, it's called Chrissy. And then this one is a Victoria. These can handle a little bit drier situations. In fact, I've got two big bird nest ferns on our mantle where we burn wood fires. And they sit up maybe like four feet away from the fire, but they have done great for over a year now. I've been really, really thankful. They get water once a week and no misting right there and they're doing well. So you just can kind of learn which varieties do better for your area based on your humidity. If you live in an area that has high humidity already, you may not even need to worry about this step. Number four is soil type. And I like to use a regular potting mix when I'm repotting my ferns. In fact, I have some right here. This is a Spoma organic potting mix. You do wanna make sure not to use something like cactus or succulent soil or African violets or orchids because those are specially mixed for those type of plants. I like to use regular potting mix because it retains enough moisture to keep your ferns happy, but it also drains enough away so that they don't rot or hold too much moisture. And that brings me to number five, which is about repotting. And typically you'll want to repot your ferns about every two years. Now it will be different for every single type of fern that you have. If you have one that's put on a ton of growth, it may need it a little bit sooner than that or a little bit longer. What I like to do is about once a year, I like to look at the root system of all my plants. So what I'll do is I'll pop them out of their container, take a look at the root system. If you still see a lot of soil around the roots, then you probably don't need to repot, but if you see a lot of roots kind of circling that can, like the outer part of the root ball, that probably means it's about time, or if you see roots coming out the bottom of the can, then you know that you need to bump it up one size. Um, and that's another thing, you don't wanna bump it up into too big of a pot, you wanna go about one size bigger. The other time that we're repotting ferns is usually when you bring one home. So I found this one down at the garden center, thought it would be really pretty to show you guys. I wanna show you how how I repot one just into a nice prettier pot. I don't like to typically keep my plants in plastic. So what I'm gonna do first, this pot has a drain hole that's really important for the health of all of your plants. I always recommend that first, if, especially if you're a beginner. I'm gonna use a little co uh, coffee filter to put at the bottom to cover that drain hole. Water will still be able to seep out, but it'll keep soil from making a mess underneath. And then I'm just gonna use a little bit of this potting soil back here. I'm gonna put a little layer at the bottom of the pot we don't need very much because this pot isn't a huge size difference than this one here. Then we'll slide the fern out and see, look at this. See how healthy these look, these roots look really good. There's still a lot of soil, like this fern could live in this pot for quite a bit longer. Um, so this is kind of a good example of when you don't need to repot, but I like to just give them a new pot when I bring them home. So I'm just gonna put it down in here no need to rough up the roots because there was no like root bound thing going on in there. Then I'm gonna grab a little bit more soil and I'm just going to pack in the little extra space around the root ball. We wanna make sure to fill that in really nicely so that there's no air pockets left. Also, when you get ready to repot, it might be a good chance to divide your ferns. I don't typically divide mine, um, but like these in particular, these Boston type ferns, they'll really clump out and you can cut them in half and have two um, ferns. But what I usually like to do is just bump them up a pot size and let that clump keep growing. And I feel like, you know, every fern is a little bit different and that could be a whole video all like in and of itself showing how to divide different types of ferns. But there we go, that one is done. Now you can add a little top dress if you want like a little bit of moss and that will help keep some moisture down in the soil. I haven't done it on most of these. I have a little bit of pebbles on this one over here, but I typically like to cover the soil with something. Oh, this one has moss. See, I think that looks really pretty right there. It kind of looks like it's from its natural, like it belongs, they belong together. Number six is watering. And this is another important one to get right because you do want to make sure you're not letting them dry out too much or giving them too much water. I think again, since we assume ferns all come from forested areas that are dark and wet, that ferns want to be really wet all the time, that's actually not the case. They like to be consistently damp, but not consistently wet or soggy. If you keep them too wet or soggy, their foliage will start to yellow and it'll drop off, especially on the Boston ferns and the maidenhair ferns. You'll see that like happen pretty quickly. 
already. Um, so then you'll know that you need to back off on the water. They'll also start to stink. I mean, you know, any house plant that you're giving too much water to, their root ball can hold onto that water and they can kind of start to smell like that rotting smell, which we don't want in our homes. But you also don't want to let them dry out too much. So with ferns, it's a little bit of a fine line and it's gonna be different for every one of us depending on how we heat our homes, where we live. So the best thing to do is like when I repot my fern in here, I'm gonna water it in today, then I'm gonna actually watch it every single day for about two to three weeks. I'm gonna take a look at it. Um, when it starts to feel like on the dry side of damp, then I'll know, hey, like today I need to give it a little bit more water and it's been about five days since I watered it last. So that means that maybe I need to water it every five days and I can put an alarm in my phone to like, hey, water your ferns, it's time. And if you go to check it and it's still a little bit wet, then you can like, you know, push it out a little bit. But it's just with ferns, I really feel like you need to keep a little bit closer of an eye on things. Succulents and cacti, things like that, you can kind of abandon for a lot longer. These need just a little bit more attention and care. Number seven is fertilizing. And these like to be fertilized about once a month through their active growing season. Um, so that might vary depending on where you live and what your season's like. I live in zone five high desert. So that means about March through September for me, that's when plants are actively pushing new growth. So I'll be fertilizing once a month with a Spoma's indoor fertilizer and I've got a three quart watering can that I like to use so I'm going to grab that and fill it full of water and then it calls for you to use one dose per quart of water so I'm going to add three doses into this can and then give it a nice stir just so it's nicely mixed. And then I'll water all of my ferns with that. And again, I'll be doing that about once a month. And for the other months out of the year, so that's November through February, these plants kind of go into sleep mode. They don't need the extra fertilizer because they're not putting on extra growth. So I'm just gonna water normally and that's it for those months. The eighth topic is grooming. And this is really important to do with all of your house plants, at least once a month, if not every couple of weeks. Take a look at each one of your plants. Remove anything that looks damaged or like it's not doing well if there are brown tips or they're starting to yellow because then if you remove those the plants will be able to put more energy into new growth and keeping the other existing growth looking nice rather than sending energy into something that's not looking particularly good also take a look at the top of the soil gather any leaves or any debris that has gathered on top of that soil because that's where insects and disease harbor over and plants just look better when they've been groomed number nine is about insect management and this one's going to be really quick and i think i'm lucky in this area because i've never dealt with insect problems on my ferns um, the four or five major insect offenders for houseplants are um, mealybugs, uh, aphids, spider mites, fungus gnats, and whitefly. Um, if you are dealing with any of those, you could use like a pyrethrin or a neem-based spray to help combat the problem. You can also try repotting, like removing all the soil that you can possibly get off the roots of your plant uh, and then repotting them in fresh soil. If you're dealing with an insect that you don't know what it is, take a picture of it, take it down to your local garden center so that they can identify it for you and then set you up with the proper spray to help whatever's going on. And the last one, number 10, is about toxicity. My opinion is that they're non-toxic. I've never heard of a houseplant for being toxic. In fact, I worked at a vet clinic for about five and a half years. We never had a dog or a cat, or I've never heard of a dog or a cat having any issues from a fern overdose. Now, if a dog or a cat got a hold of a whole fern and ate it, it probably wouldn't be the, like, the most comfortable thing. They'd probably have a nice tummy ache from it, but I've never heard of it doing any kind of real damage. Of course, you don't want to have any of your house plants toxic or not in reach of your kids or your dogs or your cats or any other animals you might have in your house um, because you just don't want them to be tipping them over, breaking anything, making a mess. It's just a good idea to keep them up out of reach. That's it, you guys. Those are all of my tips on how to take care of ferns. I have taken care of them for quite a number of years now. In fact, it was one of my uh, jobs down at the garden center for a lot of years. I had to take care of all the house plants. I even went in on some Sundays to take care of things that I knew needed a little bit of extra water. I really had a love for it and I really still do. Um, if I missed anything, please leave a comment down below or if you've learned something that's a little bit different from what I've said, leave a comment. I read all of them. We all learn from each other that way and I really appreciate all your input. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye. And I hear Benjamin just going crazy upstairs. I'm gonna go get him. Can you wave? Can you wave? See, this is what will happen if you keep your plants close to your kids. <laughs>